So, welcome. Thank you all for attending, even after the very cool uh, talk we just had by uh, the high-tech crime guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Ritger. I'm a member of Hack42, which is uh, a hackerspace in Arnhem. And I do some other stuff for work-related reasons as well, which doesn't really tie into what I'm going to talk about today. What I am going to talk about today is why you are so incredibly busy. And this talk basically came forward at the time I started noticing for myself that whenever someone would ask me, how are you? I would reply with, really busy. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm good. No, I'm not saying I, 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 I feel bad. No, I'm really busy. So that's basically where the talk came from. So. Why are you so busy? Well, I have good news. Statistically speaking, you're about as busy as anyone has ever been, at least if you're Dutch. And why do we know this? We know this because the Dutch people have been doing research on this. Incredibly enough, weird, weird Dutch people. So what has been happening since 1975? A group of Dutch people have been keeping a diary for an entire week, writing down what it is that they actually do. So the amount of time they spend uh, uh, sleeping, the amount of time they spend working, the amount of time they spend with friends, uh, volunteer activities, and they do this in half hour increments. And about 2,500 people do this every five years. The results are compiled corrected for use because there is some st statistical deviation. This gets fixed. Don't ask me how, they don't explain. Um, but every time you see the news in Holland and someone refers to, we have this amount of time being spent on a particular activity. Um, for instance, think about uh, uh, participation of women in the workforce. They're referring to this research. So if you look at the research, we see that over the years, we have uh, 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 an amount of time which is uh, 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 indicative of the stuff we absolutely have to do. This is your work. This is brushing your teeth. This is taking your kids to school. Everything that you really, really have to do in order to be a somewhat functioning member of society. And if we look at this, and we start in 1985, we sort of start around 41 hours a week spent on the stuff you really got to do. We kind of peak in 2005 at 44 hours, and then we kind of go back down. Of course, the going down curve is heavily influenced by the financial crisis, with a lot of people losing their job. So this tilts your average. Now we put the stuff next to it that you don't really want to do, that you don't really have to do, but the stuff you kind of want to do. This is time spent in front of the TV, with your mobile phone, uh, volunteering at the football club, uh, go visit your grandma, really, give her a call. And what we're seeing here is this remains kind of steady. So we consistently have more time to ourselves than the time we really, really have to do. And again, you see the peak from the other one, from 2005, and that results in a drop from the time you have for you. So these are some really, really cool statistics, which basically say you're not busy at all. I think we're done. Or maybe not. So if we're not really busy, or if we are busy, why do you feel so busy? What makes you say, whenever someone asks you, how are you, say, I'm busy? One possible explanation could be the Zygarnik effect. And the Zygarnik effect was thought up by Bluma Zygarnik, who was a Slovakian social scientist. And she was sitting in a bar in Vienna with one of her friends, and she was 
observing the waiters. And the waiters were taking orders and they were uh, uh, going back to the kitchen, fetching the order, putting the order back on the table. And one of the things she noticed was that each waiter would only have to remember the stuff they were currently working on. So as soon as an order was done, it's gone. So from this observation, she said, or rather researched, uh, um, uh, as soon as something is done, you can forget it, but while it's running, it's always in the back of your mind. And this assumes a certain amount of, well, she calls it cognitive bandwidth. So you have a set amount of space in your head in which you can fit stuff you have to do. And once that's full, you feel like you're really, really busy. So it kind of makes sense, right? I mean, was a while ago and... Or maybe not. Turns out that doing research and claiming that something applies to everyone while you've only interviewed three waiters in a cafe isn't really very much of a scientific basis for research. Um, Van Bergen et al, uh, 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 an, uh, a research team at some university, I forgot which one, did a more extensive uh, uh, piece of research in 1968 and found that everything she said and everything I just told you is nonsense, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so this is definitely not the Zygarnik effect. So what is it? Spoiler. We don't know. I'm different. You're different. I work in IT. Maybe you do too. Maybe you are an artist. The point is, our days are very, very different. I have kids. You may too, or not. And that really has a very, very large impact in how you perceive the time you're spending on things. So if everyone is different, and we just saw the statistics where we basically said everyone is the same. We're not really helped, are we? So how do we fix this? Well, Mythbusters said it best. Only difference between screwing around and science is writing it down. So we look for a way of creating more overview for ourselves. If you're busy, let's find out why you're busy. In order to do this, I started using the bullet journal method about two years ago, which is a very simple way of keeping track of your time. Uh, bullet journal was thought up by Ryder Carroll, who is um, someone who is very, very unorganized and needed a way to keep everything organized. He made a very cool YouTube movie, about five minutes. So it probably should have just shown that one instead of talking for 10 minutes already. <laughs> and what he basically says is you track the past, and by tracking the past, you order the present. So let's do this. Bullet journal is basically a paper method. So get yourself a piece of paper and get yourself a pen. I really like fountain pens, and I like pretty books, so everything for me came together. But it's not a requirement. If you have something you can keep together, give it a few folds, it will work fine as well. But you're doing it on paper. Why are you doing this on paper? It's really inconvenient. If you lose the damn thing, you have to do it again. No backups. Fortunately, yet another team at Princeton did some research and figured out that when you write something down, it helps you process the information quicker. So not only do you get rid of the information in your head and you put it to paper, you actually give it more time to process in your head. So this should make you more efficient, right? And there's no distractions. Last time I checked, my notebook didn't have Facebook, <laughs> which admittedly is a good thing, but it gives you a moment to just put away the damn smartphone, not look into blue light and spend some time becoming aware of what it is you're doing with your time. So basically, no distractions. Well, this one sort of speaks to itself, right? 
I could go into the irony of visiting a talk about being really busy and not wanting to spend five minutes to write it down. But uh, I'll save you the, the preach. Oh, wait, that was this, uh, this morning, right? The cyber preach. <laughs> you should have... Yeah, you never know. <laughs> Maybe next year. Maybe next year. All right, so let's do this thing. I made a couple of slides um, explaining how you start this. I have no idea if this actually works, but we'll see how far we get. And I'll just introduce the concepts. We'll bring them together, and at the end, I'll explain how everything ties together. So let's just start. Open your notebook and find an empty page. <laughs> Your first page is an overview of everything you have to do in a month. And you can write along if you want to. So sit down for a minute, write down the start of your month. And I like to make it pretty, because that's the kind of guy I am. And write down everything you have to do this month. So for me, I had to call Peter, I had to do a presentation, Something, something smart, smart, smart cyber blockchain, and of course, something to do with all these cybers. And that's basically it. This is your entire to-do list for the full month. And a month starts at the first of every month and ends at the end of every month. That's important, but we'll get to that. Flip over the page, so you get two more new pages. And now, start your day. So today, it's Friday, in the future. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 1st of March, and you're at the beginning of your day. You just got into your job, you're sitting down at your desk, you open your notebook, and the first thing you do is you look at your monthly log, and you decide, what am I going to do today? So we go back to this list, and we copy the stuff I want to do today. I need to call Peter, and I need to do all the cybers. Now, here's the really, really obvious part. Do it. Start working on something. So in my particular case, I called Peter, and I did all the cybers. So they're done. That, uh, that Facebook thing, they have this entire system where you're gamed into pushing as much buttons, and it creates dopamine. That's your little cross. Every time you do something, you get to put a little cross in front of it, saying you did it. This, stupidly enough, really helps me. I like this. Oh, I have something done. Awesome, I can take it off the list. I said before, we want to know what we're spending our time on. So after I do something, I'll add a number in front of it saying how many hours I spent on it. So in this particular case, Peter was talking for an hour. He wouldn't shut up. And I spent four hours doing all the cybers. And this helps you evaluate what do I have to do and how much time did I spend on it. At the end of the day, I do one small addition. This isn't part of the bullet journal method, but we'll explain later on how, how extension works. Every day, at the end of the day, I ask myself, how was my day on a scale from one to five? If I have a good day, it will be a three or higher. If we have a crappy day, it will be a one or a two. I started doing this when I noticed that I had a previous job where I was becoming more and more unhappy, but didn't really notice it. And when I started doing this, I figured out that every single time I had a crappy day, I would write it down and I would go back into my bullet journal and I would see one, two, two, four, two, one, and that for me was a very good indicator that it was time to go look for a new job. Because I was becoming unhappy, but I wasn't even aware of it, because it was such a gradual process. So it's really about making you aware what you're doing, why you're doing it. You can sit down if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do the next day, because we just closed the day. And we just do it again. So now it's Saturday. Unfortunately, I did do all the cybers yesterday, but there were more cybers to do. So this particular item made its re-entry on Saturday. Oh, that sucks, because I did get to put a cross in front of it, but it really wasn't done. 
And now I have to do something new, because a new day means you start anew with looking at your monthly log. So that very big list of to-do items that you have to do for every single month. In this particular case, at the end of the day, I did all the cybers, but I never got around to doing my presentation, which is probably familiar if you've ever given a presentation for a hacker conference. It's kind of a last minute thing. <laughs> so in this particular case, I just crossed it out because that tells me I thought I could do this today, but I didn't. And of course, I put a little number in front of it because I spent two hours on this. That was basically it. But this doesn't work, right? I mean, I have a list, but I'm not working with the list and I'm adding stuff to it and I'm crossing stuff off, but I am not very much aware what I'm doing with it. And this is one of the issues I have with doing this digitally. My to-do list just keeps on growing, 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 growing. Stuff gets added faster than I can take them off. Because as soon as I have something on my list, I never re-evaluate. That's where migration comes in. Remember that I said we have a monthly log for a month, from the first to the last of the month. So that means that every month I have to start a new monthly log, which is completely empty. This is very nice though, because I ha now have an empty monthly log and everything I did last month and everything that remains from last month. So now I have to take every item that I haven't done yet from the old log and take it to the new log. And yes, I copy everything. That's intentional, because when I look at something and I'm going, do I really need to copy this to the next month? I get to reevaluate whether or not this actually still makes sense. Maybe someone asked me three weeks ago to do something for them. Haven't gotten around yet to it, and they haven't asked me anything about it. You know what? Maybe I'll not copy this and I'll just send them an email. I'm not going to do this for you. So this is where your evaluation comes in. This makes you aware of not only put more crap on your to-do list, but actually give you an opportunity to clear it up. So the stuff that you're doing really is the important stuff that, you're you, that you should be doing and not just looking at a list with 300 items and going, <laughs> so that's basically this one. And that's basically the sum of it. Find out what's really important to you and take out everything that isn't because it's not worth your time. So this is basically the idea. We had a previous month, March. We did a couple of things. I basically did all the things except finish the presentation. So new page. <laughs> and I guess you know the drill by now. Create a new monthly log for April and copy presentation. All the other stuff was done. Maybe there was some stuff that I didn't want to copy, so I didn't copy it. <laughs> to conclude, think about what you're doing with your time. I think that is the main takeaway. For me, personally, I was feeling really busy because I was not in control. I had no idea what was going on and that made me very stressful. This helped me create some structure in what I was doing. Your evaluation moment is end of the month, but you can do this more often. You can also make this end of the week. If you're really, really hardcore, you can do a weekly log instead of a monthly log. So every Monday you start a new and you just take out all the stuff that's not interesting for last week. Maybe this works in your personal life, maybe this works in your job, or maybe it doesn't. It really doesn't matter. Find something that works for you and adjust where required. So let's say you're really enthusiastic about this and you go, yeah, I'm gonna do this. And after a week you find out, I'm not doing this. Stop worrying about it and stop doing it. It's not worth your time. Only incorporate the stuff that's important to you. Makes you happy, makes you feel better. First item really is, for me personally, as, as, as we mentioned before, research, figured out. If you write stuff down, it helps you process. And this gives me some mental quiet in my head. Because if I write it down, I don't have to worry about it anymore and keep thinking about it. It's just in the book. I'm not going to forget it because I wrote it down. And if it really wasn't important, I'll just take it away and I'll throw it out. 
This took me about three months to adjust to before I got into the mode where I was going, okay, I can trust my little book now. And just some quick questions. What if I make a mistake? Well, it's obvious, right? I mean, you can keep it as pretty as possible or you can make it functional. Or you can do both, but usually <laughs> in this crowd, <laughs> don't worry about it, just do it. And what if you lose your notebook? I have a lot of stuff in my notebook. I have an entire year. I have notes, I have my logs, I have how I feel by putting up the number. So what if I lose it? Uh, don't worry about it, let's just start again. Anything I can't remember in my new book clearly wasn't important. <laughs> and if it was, someone will come ask you. Um, just for me personally, I haven't lost my notebook yet. I've been doing this for two years. It's if, if, if you're somewhat organized, it's, it's usually not a problem. And there is much more. I just showed you the monthly log, I showed you the daily log, but there is an entire system around this, which I don't use because I don't understand it, but this will get you started. Look at YouTube, Google, uh, uh, or go find the, the, the bullet journal video. Um, I can probably put it on my page as well, but go find the video. It's five to 10 minutes, I think, and it explains all the other stuff, like how to find the logs that you made by creating an index, that sort of thing. But that's a bit out of scope for the presentation. Of course, caveat emptor, buyer beware. This has become really popular for some odd reason. And not really with the technical crowd, but with the I can make very pretty pictures on Instagram crowd. Which means that if you start Googling for bullet journal, you will find lots and lots of people that are insanely creative, that are creating very, very beautiful pieces of art, spending lots and lots of time, lots of time on it. And well, my idea of pretty is creating a line. Again, if this helps you organize, do this. If it doesn't help you organize, just take the functional parts and use them. Additionally, there is an increasing focus on giving meaning. The, the, the guy that, that thought of this whole thing, uh, Ryder Carroll, is becoming more of a um, mindfulness guru than just someone who's using this. He even did a TED talk about this. I can highly recommend it. He's talking about how writing down three things can fundamentally change your life. It Try it, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, for me, it was a very big improvement, but, but life shifting, the birth of my children is life shifting. <laughs> um, and what I said before, just use what works for you. Look at the method, pick what works, everything that doesn't, leave it out because you do not want to spend time on it. It's a waste. And of course, the whole presentation is Creative Commons. Uh, uh, and available on my GitHub page. And you can probably find it at the Hacker Hotel site somewhere. Uh. All right, thank you for listening. Hope you learned something. Any questions? Added to the current month. So it's like just like one yeah. 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 It's and, and it really is just a simple list. You have uh, you have other methods like the getting things done, and they work with open and closed loops. And I'm too stupid for that. So I just use a single list, and and I just keep adding to it in during the month. And then because you have an evaluation moment at at the end of the month, I'll just take out everything that wasn't worth it. Exactly. So some stuff I do has, has a deadline and, and I'll take the monthly log and I'll just put the, 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 the date of the current month that it has to be done in front of it. So that kind of gives me an idea. Um, for me, I usually have about 40 items, 50 items at any given time. So that's mostly work-related stuff. 
and for me it works to keep the priority in my head. I kind of know what I'm working on, I kind of know what my priority is because this big project needs to get done and then I kind of know which items belong to that. And of course I have other support tools at work. You use the Kanban board, so that, that that's it, 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 it depends. And, and for instance, I don't do my meetings in a bullet journal. You can also do that, uh, but I use Outlook because I have colleagues that need to know my availability. So again, use what works for you and be critical about this. Use it for a week, <coughs> see if it works, and if it doesn't, change it or stop doing it. It's really the, the evaluation moment. That's the only thing I can help you with. It, 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 it helps you look at, at, at what's what, what you're doing. And, and exactly, if you're thinking, uh, wh when I started doing this, the first thing I noticed was I would copy too much in a single day because I had no idea how much time I had available and how much time I could spend on something. And then when you look back and, and, uh, at the first week and you go, I didn't do even a half of this, <laughs> which is really depressing when you think about it. But on the other hand, the other stuff I did was good. Yeah. So you sort of... At least I got a better feel of why am I doing something and, and what can I realistically achieve in a day. Would you then like to see this in a bullet journal? Yeah, exactly. Really depends. Yeah. Do you uh, implement some kind of fancy word for this in your organization? Because you would say that I'm taking that to the next level. Would you like to see that <laughs> be part of your organization? Depends. It's it's a gut feeling. If 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 something has been on my to do list, uh, uh, let's say you, you 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 ask me for a specific document, it's really important, and I never got around to it, and I never had a follow up from you. That's usually my indicator for priority. People will follow up quicker, or ask me when I go get coffee, or. And in a particular scenario, it it really differs. If I think that it could be important to the future, based on my own professional experience, I'll do it anyway but and migrate it to the next month or maybe i'll just go find a person and ask them do you really still need me to do this for you and sometimes the other person will say no i thought i needed it but People will ask you stuff because it seems relevant to them at the particular time they're asking for it, but priorities shift. And it can be valid to not do something, but be open in your communication and ask them, should I still do this for you? Or maybe not do it at all. And yeah, of course. Yeah. You can you can add multiple lists. Uh, I, I, for instance, have a list with ideas. I'm, I'm the type of person that will go, "Ooh, that's a cool project," and then I would start the project and would never work on it again. But it would be there, just in the corner, mocking me. Yeah. You're not working on me, but you thought I was cool. So I stopped doing that. I have a list of ideas. Oh, that seems cool. I write it down. And then once in a while, whenever I think I can start a new product, I look at my list and I go, oh, that's cool. And then I take it to my to-do list. Take what works for you. All right, any other questions? Lots of stuff, <laughs> but it's 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 gotten better. I'm I'm professionally I'm working on a very very large project, so that has most of my time uh, uh, consumed. Um, personally, I spend time with my kids, with my family, 
uh, I'm a member of a hackerspace, so that eats some time as well. And then you're basically out of time. But I know that the stuff that I do means something to me. Maybe not to someone else, but for me it's important to know that I think that what I'm doing is the right thing. And yeah, that, that, that helps me sleep a bit, bit better. And I know why I'm doing it. 